Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're gonna be doing the first in a series of new videos that I'm gonna be making. I've had it suggested in the comments before, and that's like a deep dive series where we go more deep into a hero and the combos that they can um, can do and different strategies you can use with them. And we can also transition this across to how to counter um, heroes as when they're your enemies and stuff like that. Things like Athalia trying to avoid her ultimate or trying to avoid her initial uh, knockdown and stuff like that. Those are all suggestions I've had. So let me know what you think about this series, um, doing a deeper look into heroes and different strategies. I think it's going to be fun. And also let me know if there's any heroes you want to go deeper into or any cool strategies that you guys do have. But in this one, we are going to be going through Gwyneth. She is my favorite hero in the game to play with. So many fun strats. So let's get into this video. So because this is a deep dive, we are going to go through the skills, but if you already know all the skills of Gwyneth and you're not too fussed about it, I'll leave a timestamp in the description that'll basically just take you to past where we talk about the skills. But in case you're one of those people who hasn't seen any of my hundreds of fangirl videos about Gwyneth, I do really enjoy her. She's just a really fun character to watch and play. We're going to go through the skills. We're just going to paraphrase um, and not go too, too long into them because they're fairly simple skills to go through. Her ultimate is a... AOE that only covers the enemy's half of the battlefield. Um, if they've all pushed into your half of the battlefield, uh, she's just going to sit there at full energy and not use it. So they need to be pushed back. That's why synergizing her with enemies, that with allies that can push back enemies, is really nice. And basically, what it's going to do is AOE damage and reduce their accuracy um, for eight seconds, which is really nice. The accuracy can be actually really nice. It does pair well with things like Lyca's signature ability, where basically you get benefits for having higher accuracy than your enemies dodge and stuff like that. But that is the ultimate, fairly basic AOE damage and accuracy reduction for the enemies. Next one. Um, so Gwyneth is all about her auto attacks. So something that's really good to put on, to get on her is haste because it makes her attack really fast and do a lot more damage. So this uh, passive, it basically ties into an auto attack that gives them a chance to be flaming arrows. And basically what these flaming arrows do is cause extra damage over time. So once you see, you see at the level three skill up, your normal attacks have a 70% chance to become flaming arrows and they burn the enemy dealing an extra 60% damage per second for five seconds. Really high amount of damage when you when you uh, multiply that out. So basically 70% chance to be flaming arrows and at max level at 181, it also reduces their health recovery rate by 50% while they're burning for that five seconds, which is really, really nice. And if you get enough speed on her, she can basically, and you get the right RNG procs and you keep getting flaming arrows, you can basically just reduce their healing by half for the whole battle. So really, really nice. The next one is also tied into the auto attacks, which basically makes her attacks, once again with skill ups, have a 70% chance to become lightning arrows. Now these, you can actually proc lightning and flame arrows in one, and the lightning arrows make her arrows hit enemies um, in a vertical line of the other enemy. So basically the way it works is it's got a shortish range. So if she's at the bottom back row of your team, she can and there's two enemies in the back row of the other team, she'll be able to hit the bottom one and the one above it. It basically covers an enemy one above and one below uh, the enemy you're fighting. And so the middle is kind of the best place if she, if you she have three enemies at the back because that way she can hit all three. And also if you knock a front row enemy back into that line, you can hit them as well. So you can actually end up hitting five enemies with these burning lightning arrows. And because the damage multipliers are so high and you get that extra burn, it can be crazy damage. So um, basically at 201, she causes a stun as well. I noticed that mine does like an interrupt stun. I'm not sure if it's a bug and that is the stun. So I'm waiting to get to 201 and see if the stun is a bit longer duration, but it's like a daze when they hit them. It gives them like an interrupt. So I'm not sure how that will change. I'll have to wait and see. Next one, but yeah, like under 201, it's still really good. It still interrupts the enemies and it's still fantastic. The next ability is her passive. Accuracy is raised by 80 and crit rate by 25 when there are no enemies in her immediate vicinity. Now this is important. This is why most people think you have to have her on the back row, but there are some strategies where you can actually get this benefit whilst having her on the front row. So we will go through that in this video. And basically all it is is that um, she basically gets extra crit rate and then with skill up she gets extra crit damage as well, the extra accuracy. Um, basically a really nice buff if she's not in the immediate vicinity of enemies. So 
The next thing we're just going to quickly, quickly look at is her signature item, which increases uh, your attack is raised by 10% when in close proximity to allied heroes. So nice to be close to allies. Um, and then also at level 20, increases uh, ability effects are raised by 50% when in close proximity to allied heroes, which is really, really nice. You look at that health recovery being raised by 50% from 50% to 75%. It's, it's really nice. So I'm really pushing for that. For her signature item, I'm going to push for 20. I don't know if I'll go to 30. Just an extra 10%. I feel like I'd rather use my, um, my stones on something else for that has a more beneficial i really like that they put um this effects one at level 20 normally they have it would be on most heroes it's something like you know at level 10 you get attack 20 percent then level 20 you get the 30 percent and then you get the cool thing at 30 so her cool thing comes at 20 which is really really nice now let's get into other heroes Okay, I've got the wrong item on her. That was that was something that we'll talk about as well later, but we're going to put that on her now. I'm going to talk about other heroes that synergize with her, and then we'll go into some playtesting and some strategies. So, basically, heroes that work well with her. Cirrus, I really do like. Uh, the reason I like him is... He's just, he's a fairly thick tank once you unlock his signature ability. You can farm him from the Labyrinth store, so he's really easy to get. Um... And he can just be that thick tank in front of her because the thing with Gwyneth is she's really hard to use as your carry hero if you don't have good tanks that can take the damage and keep um, enemies back because she, well, as soon as an enemy gets onto Gwyneth, she's going to get absolutely trashed is the basic gist behind it. So he's really good. Uh, he's got this passive. We're not going to go too deep, but it reduces the damage he takes if it's low damage. And then he's also, why do I keep clicking back? And then he's also got this one. Um, which increases his max health. They synergize really well. Basically, he takes no damage from low damaging attacks. So good thick tank that's easy to ascend. The other thing about him is he has this ultimate ability which pushes enemies back. So as the fight goes on, um, and you may have lost one or two of your heroes, and the enemy's starting to advance, he'll normally pop this, push them all back, meaning that uh, Gwyneth's arrows, when they're like chain, chain fire arrows, when you get the lightning and fire proc, are going to hit multiple enemies and then also pushing them back into range of her ultimate meaning if she's been waiting to use her ultimate you push them back into that range and then she can ultimate on them it's just really nice for not early like early fight combo but like moving on it is really nice when you get into the later stages of the fight hendrick is another one that's fantastic for early combo because he does have the knockback. So he's basically, he's going to run into battle, hit someone with their shield, he's going to hit the front row enemy and knock them back, meaning those arrows can hit the front row enemy even though you're targeting the back row. Really, really nice. The one problem with Hendrik, which we'll go into in a minute, is that he can get interrupted very easily, so you got to do some strats to get him going. The next hero I want to look at is basically just because you're using light bearers, Rowan is amazing for progress because he has potions that just heal um, for a percentage of health, it doesn't matter if he's low rarity. So he's he's not basically he doesn't synergize with Gwyneth except for that he's a light bearer and he's a good healer. And basically those potions are really nice for helping your tanks survive and keeping them enemies away from Gwyneth. That's why I really do like Rowan, even though he wants to be in the middle back as well, and often Gwyneth does too. It's still a trade off that I'm willing to make. Next up, we're going to look at Lyca. The reason Lyca is so good is because she has, uh, where is it, the passive here. At the beginning of the battle, Lyca gallops onto the battlefield, inspiring her allies, raising, raising their morale that increases their attack speed for a period of time. Now, the reason this is fantastic is because, like I said, Gwyneth is all about her auto attacks, and raising her haste at the start of the battle means she's going to get those arrows off earlier, and because those arrows do affect an interrupt when they are lightning, you can actually sometimes interrupt an enemy Arden or something with his roots, and also if you change this, which is why I had it changed before, to Jura's Call, you get this extra extra haste, meaning you can actually that can actually help you move faster too. So that is one that sometimes to get the first attack off, I do put on her to interrupt things like Arden and stuff like that. And the next one that I want to look at is the twins. Basically, the twins I use these guys in uh, Riz because if we look at their ultimate, it's basically a massive haste buff for your team, meaning that she fires arrows really, really fast. But these guys, I don't really use in campaign because they're hard to make survive at low rarity and it's hard to get a lot of copies of them. And that pretty much does it for the com No, one more combo, one more combo. Lawson. Lawson's amazing because he has this ability which links the nearest and farthest enemy um, and then at max skill they to each take 120% of the damage the other one takes. You can do this two ways. If you basically, if you're hitting 
that if there's a tank that Gwyneth isn't going to hit, um, you can put him in the back top. Say the, top, the enemy tank is the top one you want to hit. You put him in the back top, it's going to link that tank with the furthest backline hero. And if Gwyneth's hitting that backline hero, it's going to spread that damage to the tank as well. Another way you can do it is that you can actually manage to push the two linked enemies both into range of Gwyneth's arrows, which means they're basically taking double damage from those arrows. So he's really fun to do with her as well. Um, and also, if you do get enough copies of him to ascend him fairly far, he can do really nice damage. That's just an RNG thing. As you can see, I haven't had the RNG. The final one we're going to talk about isn't in the game yet, but I'm really hyped for him because he's coming soon. And that is going to be Titus. Titus looks like an absolute beast. He's got this ability here where he basically runs into battle and knocks enemies back. We'll do this. And I'm going, to be, I'm going to be pulling for him as soon as the patch comes. But if we look at that again, basically what I think happens here is he's not going to have much of a chance to get interrupted by enemies when he does use this. I'm hoping he doesn't. Unlike um, something like Hendrik, who does wait a few seconds before using his and get interrupted. So that is Titus. We will be pulling hard for him and doing a test with him as soon as he comes out. And the final one that I want to mention is Estrilda. Estrilda does have a knockback. However, um, for some reason... Uh, where is it? Where's the knockback? Is it this one? Swipes at an enemy. So she, the, the problem with Estrilda is sometimes this... So I will test her every once in a while on a stage if I'm stuck. But often her knockback doesn't knock the enemy tank back far enough to actually put them in range uh, of the chain lightning uh, for the back row. So Strilda sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. It's really hit and miss. I think it depends on the enemy and how far they run forward. So that is it for... Uh, the heroes that, that combo with. Now let's go into it and start actually doing some combos. Sorry for the long explanation. Hopefully you noticed in the uh, in the timestamps that I would have put a timestamp to go past it because now that I'm recording, I'm thinking it's worth putting that in as well in case people don't want to see the combos, they just want to see it working. So this is my team. This is my team. The reason I've decided to pause my progression at this stage and my progression is going absolutely nuts with Gwyneth. She's that hero where I feel like every stage I have a chance of clearing, except for some stages where the enemies, you know, they have a melee hero in the middle and it's like some enemies teams just don't go well for Gwyneth. So basically this, is, the reason I wanted to show you guys this one is because there's a strategy that I wanted to show you where I put Gwyneth in the front row. And that is this strategy here. So it allows us to have Rowan in the middle which is really, really handy. That means his potions can heal everyone. And what we do here is, um, basically there's no point putting Gwyneth in the middle because uh, this, and, and Kira, I'm getting used to her name, and Kira can, is actually a melee hero. She's going to move forward. So putting Gwyneth in the middle would make her only hit Ira. Putting her down the bottom here would only make her hit um, uh, the Drift. And basically, her chain lightning is only going to hit these two no matter which position she's in. So that might lead you to put her back here. However, the problem with Hendrik is some enemies will interrupt his knockback and they won't get knocked back, meaning this guy may not move back. However, what we can do here is put Gwyneth in the front and what happens is Hendrik will knock back the enemy without getting interrupted and then her chain lightning will hit these three enemies. It'll hit the Ira, the Bloodsnarl and the Dref. Dref? I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But it'll hit all three of them and she will be far enough away from them that she does get her buffs. Plus, Hendrik will be right next to her, meaning she gets the signature item buff for the extra attack for being in close proximity. So, it's a really, really nice combo. Obviously, you are stuck at only getting um, hitting three enemies, but hey, you weren't going to do better than that in the first place. Something I'd really love to try is swapping this series out for... We're back over to the test server looking at this. Ooh, pack on the test server. Okay, uh, is swapping him for Titus once he comes to the game because that way I feel like I could knock both frontline heroes back and actually hit the four of them, which could be really nice. And also, if this hero is melee, she might run down to the Titus if he's attacking down here and become in range of those chain lightning arrows. That's something else I'd love to test, but hey, this is what we have for now. So we're going to jump into it and show you guys what I'm talking about. So look at the Hendrik. He's going to run, knock them back, and then the arrow hits, and then we do get those damage. Now, the problem with Hendrik is on this team, I do have a Lyca, which is very, very squishy. And there you go. That's that's the serious how he can really affect change in a battle. So we got trash there. I don't think we're going to be able to kill this. Um, like I said, I'm progressing pretty fast, so the enemies do do a lot of damage. But we'll just watch that again. I'm going to put on one time speed. And so you can see, Hendrik actually does the knockback before her arrow hits. Um, and then basically, what we really needed to happen was double 
uh, chain lightning with flaming arrows. And that would have probably got us through a lot better. As you can see, that Ira is at a tiny little bit of health left and it sort of hurts us there, but we may actually still clear this. Let's have a look. And as you can see, it's very RNG about what she does with her arrows. And if you get the right procs, you can really actually demolish a stage. So I think he's gonna throw us again and destroy us unless we get one more arrow. Yes, okay. So it's very RNG based, very RNG based on what she does do with her arrows. So <clears throat> hopefully we can still demonstrate a few things because like I said, we're getting really hard. But the situation in which I really like using this combo with Gwyneth here is um, is okay. This one we can demonstrate because it's a savvius. So we'll, we'll just basically see who the savvius attacks. But the reason I like doing this combo against the savvius, especially if that savvius was down the bottom or top, I'd put Gwyneth in the line where the savvius is going to attack, and that's what we'll do in this one. But it's because she's ascended, she's so much tankier than the rest of my heroes, and that way she can take that first uh, spear from savvius really, really well because she has the factional advantage as well. And then Hendrik runs in, knocks the other enemy back, and then we get the stuns and everything. So let's try that as well. And once again, we have the Lyker in there just because haste buff is so, so nice to use. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to drop the Lyker here to demonstrate the Lawson. Now the Lawson is another great one, which... So basically, he's going to link the Blood Snarl here with the Ark, we'll call him Ark, and basically make it so that when Gwyneth is going to hit this Ark dude, it's also going to spread that damage to the Blood Snarl, even though she's not actually hitting him. So let's get into that. I'm hoping the Savius attacks Gwyneth, but if he doesn't, we'll swap it up and see if we can make him. Okay, he's going to attack the Cirrus, which is really going to hurt my team, but hey, Cirrus is actually surviving pretty well, and... We're probably going to get this. As you can see, with that ultimate, it hit... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replay that one and show you guys what the ultimate did again because due to the enemies being linked, it was really, really nice. So if we go here and we hit play, so as you can see, we get the knockback, we get that chain stun and burning. You can see we, we did that savvies below half health with the first one. If that arrow was a chain lightning as well, it would have gone even better. As you can see, we did two arrows in a row. There we go, we do the ultimate there, and because it was hitting both enemies linked by Lawson's skill, they both took double damage from that ultimate, and you basically just delete them. So, absolutely fantastic strategy using the Lawson. I absolutely love it. The other thing about Lawson that is also very notable is, we'll jump over here, his other ability is that, if we go over here, this eye, it basically puts a mark on an enemy, meaning they take higher damage from my hero's ultimates. And once again, if the enemies are linked and one of them has that eye on them, they're going to be taking extra damage from the ultimate of Gwyneth because of that. And then also, if both of the enemies are getting hit by her ultimate, they're going to be taking extra damage to that. And it just becomes, you can basically just one-shot things. So it's a really, really nice combo. However, when I do do that thing, I do lose out on the damage. Something I'd consider for later game PvP is dropping the um, the Rowan. Rowan's just so vital, I find, in early progression in a Light Bearers team. Like I said, to keep your tanks alive and keep them healthy. Because he's basically... The potions are just vital. Later game, when you know, you've know you got full Ascended Heroes, all that sort of stuff, I'd consider dropping him for the Lyca so you can get the Haste buff, but still get the Lawson uh, mixed damage and stuff like that. But for now, I normally swap out Lawson and Lyca. So... What we're going to do in this one is try and demonstrate hitting four enemies, and by that we're going to do this. So the reason I sometimes put uh, Rowan in the front row is my Rowan's squishy. He doesn't, he never hangs around for long anyway. Doesn't normally get to an ultimate, but this way I can put him in the front row, meaning as opposed to putting him here, his potions will not heal the Savius. If I put him here, his potions will be able to heal. I mean, not the Savius, the Cirrus. <laughs> my bad. Don't yell at the screen yet. I corrected it fairly quick. So his potions will actually heal Cirrus, Gwyneth, and Hendrik. It will heal all of them. The only one it's going to miss is the Lawson. So that's why I put him there. And plus, he's only going to take one or two hits, which at this stage, when he's only Elite Plus, only Elite Plus is enough to kill him. Um, but, you know, the Hendrik is going to run past, knock the Grizzle back, and then we're going to actually hit the four enemies, we're going to hit the three back rows who are back row enemies that stand there. We're going to hit the Grizzul as well because he's going to be knocked into range. And then also because we're going to link the Estrilda to the um, Isabella, we're going to actually hit all five enemies with damage with Gwyneth's first arrow provided it is a chain lightning. So let's get into it and let's hit times one speed. As you can see, we've got the lightning flaming arrow. We hit all those back enemies and then the Gwyneth took some damage as well. And once again, we hit them all again and we're doing some really effective damage. 
Problem once again with the um, with the Hendrick, we didn't survive long enough. The problem with that Hendrick is that you know my Lawson is basically really really weak, uh, <laughs> meaning that that he's going to get hit by the Strule to run through and need Hendrick to go save him. That's the one problem with Hendrick when you have weak heroes. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap this up. We're going to try and do it the opposite way around. Hopefully nothing's going to hit Lawson too early so that Hendrick can keep the enemies at bay at the top row. So let's see what happens in it this way. So we get the knockback on the Estrilda. We get the damage through to the Estrilda. He still ha Hendrick still has to run away. And basically this is where it becomes an RNG game. Nice, we did get that early early ultimate by the Cirrus. He gets his knock up, which is really nice, but we are gonna die to the Isabella with her massive ultimate that's gonna just basically shred us. So we're gonna try this again. And this is what happens when you are using a Gwyneth is that it becomes purely RNG based. You, there's like some of these stages, because like I'm, I feel like I'm pushing way above where my hero levels are. And basically what it is, is just, I, I, re I just retried stages all day, put it in my pocket, like find a formation that I think will work with Gwyneth and then just keep retrying. And eventually the RNG gets you there. So put it back on two times speed. Let's see if we can affect some change here. Um, as you can see that Strilda, once again, we only got the chain lightning on the first arrow, which wasn't good enough. We need chain lightning on the first two arrows at least. And that's, that's the joy of Gwyneth. Okay, chain lightning, chain, okay, that, the second arrow was a normal arrow. The next one was flaming only. So we're pretty much screwed. We just didn't get the procs. So let's try again. We want chain fire both ones. Okay, chain fire, and now fire only. So now we get the chain fire again, but the Strilled is too close. We may be able to get, oh, the, the Grizzle ultimate just absolutely screwed us there. And, and this is what I mean, like, I, the, this is a 100% of formation that we can win with. I may even try swapping the Lawson. What I might do is actually, this is some another thing that we can try. I'm not sure if it'll work. I can try putting the Lawson in the front row to, to guarantee that we get Cirrus's ability off, but I think he will just get one shot by... Okay, no, he got his link off. Okay, that's nice. That's nice, we got, we got the link off anyway. Uh, but it's still, like I said, RNG didn't work. We, we, we are going to clear this stage. The other thing that I can try is once again, putting Laika in. And Laika, once again, is another hero that likes to be in the middle for her ultimate. But hey, we got three heroes that want to be in the middle. In the end, you have to choose one. So, um, let's jump into it and let's see what we can do here. So hopefully the Laika can survive a little bit longer and let the Hendrix stay over there, which she is doing, which is really nice. So that's going to be very important. And this is definitely the comp we need to be using. So as you can see, we're doing some pretty good damage. We've killed everyone except the Grizzul, and now he's down. So like I said, swapping Lycat and Lawson can sometimes make all the difference. Some stages where Lawson just isn't gonna quite do it, the Lycat absolutely owns it. And some positions where um, the Lycat isn't gonna quite do it, the Lawson just destroys it. So it's very RNG based. Okay, here is a very niche situation. Like this is basically one that she sucks at. She basically just sucks at this combo. You've got a melee hero in the middle that runs forward. You've got a real threatening hero in Isabella at the back by herself. So if you want to hit her, you're pretty much going to only be hitting her unless you do the Hendrick thing down the bottom and you hit the uh, Ogi as well, which sucks. You have Dan who's going to do a lot of damage. And then you've got the big threat, which is a Sylvina because she's just going to basically one shot something. Now, what I have found, who is the boss first? and Vidan is the boss. So this is a stage I feel like I am gonna be stuck at. But what I like to do is, I do like to put, so basically I'm gonna leave her in the middle here, I'm gonna take the Hendrick out. Because by not knocking anyone back, at least she, her from the middle, is gonna hit the Ogi, the Vidan, and the Kaz. Now Kaz is just annoying because she dodges. This is like a really frustrating thing for my Gwyneth combo. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the Rosaline in. The reason I'm putting the Rosaline in is she seems to run away from uh, Sylvina sometimes. Not too well, but sometimes she can actually get there. Sometimes I will just try the Nara to knock her down, but I lose faction bonus and stuff like that. So first time I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try her, because sometimes she gets one hit from the Sylvina if it's not a crit, because mine is only elite plus, she will survive and then keep running away. So let's just try it and see what happens. And it just lets me protect my, as you can see, she got one hit there. She ran away a little bit. Okay, the strat's just not going to work. As you can see, we did get some good damage into those two front row heroes, but not quite there. So what my next strategy is going to be to try is to drop the Lyca, put that in there. 
And then we're also going to put in, because uh, I really need Rowan. So this one, like, like I said, this one's really hard. So we might even try this. We might try this. The Kaz is going to absolutely wreck us. But it's the it's basically just test things is the main is the main idea behind this, and in this game you are gonna hit enemies that just absolutely trash you and there's nothing you can do but get levels and I feel like this is one of those ones. Uh, there's a few other strategies that I could try with this one. We're not gonna to go too long into it. Oh wait, I had her in the wrong spot. Let's try that again. Rip. Okay, Rowan still died instantly. She died instantly. Everyone dies instantly and it's happy days. So. The one last thing I am going to try with this is to do this, this. Uh, actually, we might leave her there, do that, and put Hendrick in. See if this does work. I'm hoping that Sylvana doesn't crit and force Hendrick to run away. That's the one frustrating thing that this could do. Okay, there we go. So now we're hitting the Ogi and the Hendrick and the uh, Isabella. We do get that ultimate off, which is going to be nice. We can get an ultimate in one second here. Okay, this is actually working better than I thought. But once again, we're still going to get trashed. The lineup just doesn't work too well for Gwyneth. So this is one of those ones like I was talking about earlier. I'm just going to be stuck at for a little bit. But hey, if you look at my heroes, all I need is one more copy of Savius down here. And I will be able to get him to 141, which will increase my resonating crystal and make the other half of my team capable of going to 141, which will be a big buff. And that's where I'm at at the moment. That's the Gwyneth. It was a bit of a long video. I do apologize for that. But um, but yeah, let me know what you think about this series. Let me know if I went too deep into it. Gwyneth's just one of those ones with so much you can do with her. So there's a lot that you can talk about. But she is a really fun hero. Really enjoy it. And I was basically wondering what I was going to do for a video today. And I had a list and I was like, you know what? I'm just having fun with this Gwyneth account. So we're going to make this video. So let me know any other heroes for the series that you guys want to see. If you're still around at this stage of the video, drop me a hi in the comments and uh, thanks for hanging around at this stage because it is a long video but thanks for watching and I'll look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.